Can we ever know what makes a genius? The artist we're celebrating today had so many defining experiences. A rural childhood, he was one of seven siblings. A migrant story, he walked from Bucharest to Paris. Not to mention numerous fantastic famous friends and passionate lovers. An extraordinary life that informed his extraordinary work. I don't think it's too much to say that Constantin Brancuch is Romania's most important artist. And it's his world we're going to enter in this edition of Who is Romania? Often referred to as the father of modern sculpture, Brancouche worked with so many different materials and he transformed them into pioneering artworks that still speak to us today all over the world. His art is held in collections in the Guggenheim, New York, Brancouche's studio in Centre Pompidou in Paris, and here in London at the Tate Modern. He worked in steel, wood, marble, bronze, small, large, outside in parks, inside in museums, abstract, modernist, art deco, and yet each work was indisputably his. No one but Constantin Brancouche could have worked such wonders. Where did it all begin? Well, here I have to name check Hobitsa in southwestern Romania, the tiny village where he grew up. Yes, he left it far behind for the charms of Paris. But Brancouche never forgot his roots. He wrote, I would have been nothing, and I would not have carved anything without Hobitsa, without its gates and fountains, which meant for me a real academy of fine arts. A lot of his work was in wood. Now, we know there's a long heritage of Romanians carving in wood, but we also know that Brancouche was heavily influenced by African art. And in fact, here at the Tate Collection in London, there's a great example of his signature fusion of different forms. The sculpture is one of several called Fish, which is renowned for its bronze simplicity, a streamlined shape that makes you focus on the speed and flash of fish. But when I look at it, I see the almost incongruous oak base. Now, is that Romanian inspired, African, or simply Brancouche at his best? A village boy born in 1876, his exposure to global influences required endeavor, and not just of the artistic sort. After studying in Craiova and Bucharest, he leaves Romania and he sets off walking to Paris. And much later, he talked about the experience. He said, I arrived in Basel, where I sold the rest of my clothes, all this way on foot, through Bavaria, Switzerland, Alsace. He mentions singing, but also of exhaustion and bouts of pneumonia. The story gives a whole new meaning to the idea of suffering for art. And we know when he gets to Paris, there are crashing lows, dishwashing, humiliation, and as he puts it, sometimes I used to cling to walls not to fall, from hunger, from disease. But there were highs too. Studying in the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris, renowned artist friends, Matisse, Eric Satie, Modigliani, being a student in Philip Mercier's workshop, delivering almost a sculpture a day. But he didn't stay long. As he put it, I had to find my own way. He also turned down Rodin's assistants, saying, nothing grows in the shade of large trees. He'd come too far to compromise his art, and perhaps by then he already knew in pre-war Paris that he had what it takes to become truly great. Of course, there were plenty of heady lovers. Princess Marie Bonaparte, the American heiress Peggy Guggenheim, who incidentally came to Paris for sexual and artistic adventures. Boy, did she find them. And then much later, the great Romanian singer Maria Tanase. That he was four decades older than her did not stop a passionate romance, but not one of them ended in marriage. He was adamant. An artist should not get married because he can be massacred by his wife, who swears, tries to subdue him and turn him into the hero of the slipper. His women, like his art, were varied and splendid. In fact, you can see his love of the female form and features in so much of his work. Here in London at the Tate Collection, there's an exquisite bronze Danaid. It was inspired by a meeting with a Hungarian student. He captures her beautiful lines, her strong brows, big eyes, round face. She loved it. And at the Met in New York, his sleeping muse is sublime and so simple. 
But if it's size you like, then Brancouche delivered on that front too. Okay, so he lived most of his life in France, but he always considered Romania his home, and he gifted Targujiu, arguably the greatest trio of outdoor sculptures. The centerpiece is the Cloana Infinitului, the endless column. Up, up and away, brass-clad cast iron modules threaded onto a steel spine some 30 meters high. Some say it symbolizes the endless, the infinite sacrifice of Romania's Great Wall. It's flanked by the Masa Taceri, the table of silence, and the Puerta Saratului, the gate of the kiss, which has become the perfect place for an Instagram pout. And on that breathtaking note, I need say no more. Brancouche lives on. America, France, Britain, and outside in their hot summers and harsh winters in Romania. Great art for everyone to enjoy.